Hey, who doesn't like a cold beer every now and then? Everyone has their favorites, from ales to stouts, from lager to porters. And we like ours with a crab cake. Today on This Crab Cake, we're joined by some of the beer gurus, or as we call them, brew yous, from Katzif Brothers. And we're going to talk, you guessed it, beer. Hey, we're back here at Katzif Brothers, and uh, boy, did I screw up. This must be a Monday, because... Everything that went wrong could possibly go wrong. I was late getting here. I brought the wrong equipment. So we're winging it here, but again... We are feeling extra Monday today. (laughs) We are here with Lauren and Bill, and we're going to be talking about spring beers because it is spring. Last time we were here, it wasn't quite spring. We were talking St. Patrick's Day. Yeah. Just before we started, I I wanted to talk about this uh, this pink beer that's causing... We're going to get there. We're going to get there. We'll talk about the Natter Days. I promise. We've got one chilling here, getting ready to... uh, For a sample on air, so we'll get some uh, real-time opinions. Yeah, we've got some spring beers. We've also got uh, something that we're calling Beyond Beer, uh, which as we go into spring and summer is a a new category of some alcoholic drinks that you wouldn't otherwise think have alcohol. So we've got some spiked seltzers, and then we've got some agua frescas uh, with a little bit of alcohol in them, too. So we have all Ah, sorts of things today. And um, we've got rosé. We brought rosé, too. We're getting into rosé season. I I remember the the Beyond Beer came out, uh, sort of came into... Play, I guess it was at the um, about last June or so with the Babe. Was yeah, so the, Babe. Well, Babe is wine, and Babe is just canned wine. Uh, so we have Babe too. Shoot, should have grabbed some of that. We could have really made it a party <laughs> this uh, Wednesday morning. But uh, yeah, so Babe's a canned wine. But what we have here are the Spike Seltzers, which are a category that is absolutely exploding. Uh, last couple of years, these have become huge. You see them everywhere. Um, and they are seltzer water with alcohol. So behind that whole hype on like LaCroix and Polar Spring and all of those other brands, we've got some for your uh, drinking occasions too. I know my daughter loves a spiked seltzer and Mm -hmm. um, we went around a liquor store looking for it. And we were having a tough time, tough time, because it was so obvious. There was a whole section of it right there, <laughs> yeah, right, the, there right there the at the end of the cooler. Yeah. And it's like, okay, this is, uh, which is typically the uh, the way we end up working there. But it's, yeah. uh, it is a big, it is a big thing. And how did that come into, into play? I mean. It, you know, so Spike Seltzer um, has really just been on the heels of this kind of better for you movement. Um, as people are more conscious about what they're putting in their bodies and the amounts of sugar and artificial sweeteners and the calories of their, you know, alcoholic drinks, it's it's become that sort of category that plays into maybe a little bit more of like a casual day drinking experience. You may really, really love beer, but you go and have, you know, several, we'll just say several, we won't put a number on it. You go have several beers and you start to feel full and you start to feel just kind of ick and it's outside, you're during the day and it's hot out. These spike seltzers fill up that void perfectly. You know, they drink really light, the flavor's really good, they taste like just a, a regular flavored seltzer water, which is what you're drinking otherwise sure. at home so they just felt fill this really cool niche of just daytime drinking you know low calorie lower alcohol typically too you know you're mm-hmm. not looking at uh, the ones we have here today are four and a half percent so you can be responsible with them still um and also it helps us reach out to that non-beer drinker how many people do you know that are doing keto or doing something else and they're like i can't you know, I can't drink beer. I don't like beer. You've, you've, you've got to do that. I remember when the, well, Kegs and Corks, which is mm-hmm. a festival here in, in August, that started out as a wine festival over on the Eastern Shore. Yep. And I remember the organizers said that they kept hearing year after year after year. It was like, well, I can't drag my, well, stereotype here. I can't drag my husband here because there's no freaking beer. Yeah. <laughs> and, then, and who wants to drink red wine in the middle of the day, you and, know, in the middle of yeah. summer? Like, that's not and, fun. And then a light went on and said, well, let's do beer and wine. Yeah. And Kegs and Corks was born there. So it was the best of both worlds. Now you've got the husbands dragging the wives out saying, hey, it's a beer fest. But hey, they've got they've wine. Got and wine. They've got, you know, and it, it, it works out there. So, I mean, it's not surprising that the it has really sort of taken over the market. Yeah, um, it's it's been really cool to see. And, you know, the category is exploding. And also, it's just a, it's something different. And goodness knows... We are all looking for something different. Um, you can only drink so much of the same thing for so long before you want to break and you want to switch it up. You know, I, I'm a beer girl at heart. Like, I, I love beer, but I you also think? really like wine. Uh, yeah, I know, right? <laughs> I end up in a terrible industry for that. Um, I love beer, but sometimes, like, I just, I'm not feeling a beer. Sometimes I'm just not feeling a beer, and some of these items uh, will definitely. It's, it's not like it's like pizza. I mean, pizza, I love pizza, pizza. Is, pizza is. I don't think I've ever not wanted pizza there, John. I think we're talking about two totally different things. Apples and oranges, apples yeah. and oranges here for sure. Well, there are going to be plenty of opportunities. Uh, coming up on the 20th is opening day of Rockfish season. Yeah. And that's Boatyard Bar and Grill has their big shindig, which they do every year, and it's the, uh, the catch and release tournament. It gets yep. underway at, I think, some god awful hour, like 
5 a.m. or something like that, or maybe even earlier. So it would be 5 a.m. on 420 is what you're saying. <laughs> Got it. Oh, Bill, we forgot you were here for I a know, minute. I'm, 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 I'm just chilling on the back. <laughs> you know, yeah, 4, 420, yeah, that's, uh, I forgot about that on right. Saturday. Right. Uh, the opening day for Rockfish at the Boatyard Barn Grill, and that's always a good party afterwards. Um, I know Dick Brando throws a, a good a good party there as well. And there's an awful lot of things that are coming up to look forward to and got lots of opportunities to drink some of these yeah. non Beyond beers. Beyond beer. Beyond yeah, beers. we call them beyond beer. Yeah, the uh, the Rockfish Tournament's great, though. It's uh, in partnership with Chesapeake Bay Foundation, too. Um, and we, through our partnership with Devil's Backbone, uh, Striped Bass Pale Ale. So we have a way of turning all sorts of really fun events into beer events, mm-hmm. and uh, this is no exception. All right, now why is Devil's Backbone Striped Bass Pale Ale not called Devil's Backbone Rockfish? <laughs> because... <laughs> I think straight bass rolls off the tongue a little bit better. Speak for um, yourself, but, but you know, what, yeah, I think uh, you know, I think that's one of those things that everybody has their uh, something different that they call it, and they just want a straight bass. Well, you know, it's funny that you mentioned that though, because this area, it, a lot of it is rockfish or stripers. You know, stripers, I mean, yeah. A lot of people call it that, but the actual the 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 Latin term, if you will, is morone saxatilis. That is the name for the, the striped Where bass. Where do you learn these I, You know, I didn't expect to get schooled here. I'm just saying. <laughs> that is why is. we have them. We say and that every time. We learn something new from Bill. They nestle into the nooks and crannies of the reef rocks, and then that's one of the things that they're called rockfish for is because that's where they actually, like, kind of nest, so. And they have stripes. That's and, why they're and yes, yes, indeed. <laughs> they have stripes. I know, um, I mean, I mean, tuners are called albacores some places, yeah. I uh-huh. think. And, uh, yeah. I think flounders also have a different name for something at I'm different sure places. Well. Animal House. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> it ain't over until we say it's over. Right, right. right. What's your jokes. name? Flounder. Why? Why not? <laughs> what a jerk. <curry. laughs> With the jokes. But, but, but we digress. Yeah. But we digress. I mean, do we have to? We can go on and on about Animal House, right? Mm-hmm. Oh, what a classic movie. My very first R-rated movie. Really? Actually, you know what? I think it might have been mine, too, but inadvertently. I don't think I knew what I was putting in the VHS player at our family's beach house. And I think my friend and I were looking for movies, and I just remember sitting on the floor in the living room, the beach house, and going, I don't understand this movie. You know, talk about that. That was my awkward, uh, I was probably 16 at the time. And I was in a theater in Manhattan with my father, of all people. And that scene when Belushi's up on the ladder and the oh, girl's the getting naked. <laughs> and he's trying to in between the windows. Yeah. And I'm just sitting here just like, just freaking shoot me. You're just shoot dying. Me. <laughs> oh, Completely <laughs> mortified. But this is when he falls backwards in his face. It doesn't really even change. It just like stays right. the same the whole way. <laughs> and I'm pretty sure he was in a pirate. You know, I don't know. Maybe he wasn't. But anyways, yeah. All right. So, well, maybe we digress. Uh, yeah. But it was a good digression. Yeah. No, that's you a good that. one. I'm happy with that. <laughs> that was... All right, so what's in the bucket this week? All right, so here's what I have in the bucket. Uh, as we're going into spring, I brought a couple of things that are just kind of relevant to the season. Thought we'd switch it up a little bit. We've been doing a lot of seasonals lately, so figured we'd switch it up. Um, I've got a couple of different styles of the spike seltzer. Uh, John, depending on what your tastes are, so we can kind of pick our way through those. Um, I also have uh, to check our rosé box as we get into rosé all day season. Uh, I have Bold Rock Ciders uh, Rosé, which is an awesome, awesome rosé cider. Uh, I also brought Hoo Garden, which is the original Belgian wit. That's a year-round classic beer. It's been right. around for hundreds of years. However, this is the time of, the, of year where everybody seems to really want to drink that, so I brought one of those. And then I brought something else uh, that I know everyone's very excited about. We've got Natter Days. So we've got our pink lemonade Natty Lights uh, sitting here. And then... I also brought, we're not going to drink all these, I mean, unless you guys want to. I also brought a couple different flavors of the Spiked Agua Frescas, which are a new uh, Beyond Beer brand that we have. What was that again? A spice? It's a Spiked Agua Fresca. So an Agua Fresca is, Agua Fresca literally means fresh water. Okay. Um, It's a really popular drink in the Southwest, in Mexico, California, that is basically fresh juice. Um, And so these are sparkling Agua Frescas, so it's a sparkling juice, essentially, uh, but with alcohol. So it's another, like, low ABV, lower calorie drink that sort of falls in line with that spike seltzer Ah. drinker. But it's got a little bit more flavor, so I thought we might play around with those, too. Um, So we've got all sorts of great stuff. We'll start with spike seltzer. Yeah, let's do it. So let's do that first. Um, Okay, so I've got a couple of different flavors here. Are you a grapefruit fan? I like grapefruit. I I heard fresca, and I do like fresca as a a soda. Perfect. All right, so we've got grapefruit, I've got lemon lime, and then I've got black cherry rosemary. So I've got a couple of different options depending on everybody's tastes. I think we're putting those, like, plants in them. You know, (laughs) 
spices. We've got both options. So, you know, you go to all these restaurants now and all these cocktails, like everybody's making everything really herbal and floral and hibiscus is huge right now. And we've got all these crazy things. So we've got a little bit of both. We've got some like really traditional fruit flavors. And then we've got some of the fancy schmancy, a little bit bougie flavors, but I promise you they're good. So let's start with... And th this is all the Bon and Viv stuff, right? Yeah, this is all the Bon and Viv. So this is... um. But these are our spike seltzers. Um, they're all 90 calories, zero grams of sugar. So that's one of the greatest uh, points about these is that there is no added sugar. Uh, they're also gluten-free naturally, which okay. is great. Um, if you're on that uh, bandwagon and the flavors are all natural um, and they're four and a half percent alcohol, if I didn't mention that. Already. How many different flavors do they have, do you know? Oh goodness, so we I guess, have I guess you know. six different flavors. Um, we've got grapefruit, cranberry, lemon lime, Black cherry rosemary, hibiscus clementine, pear elderflower. Well, so my question would be, what goes well with rockfish? <laughs> you could put any of them with rockfish, exactly, depending on the, on the exactly. seasoning of your rockfish. Come on, Bill, that's 101. If you're knighted, you know that. What, hey, look. what are the seasonings on your food? That's how you're going to pick your beer. I, I, I respect that. I do. <laughs> All right, so we're going to start with lemon lime. We'll just keep it simple and we'll start with the little stuff here. So See, you know, this is all kind of weird for me because, I mean, I'm used to coming here and, like, drinking beer -y things. I and then every now and then you throw a cider in and it... I got to keep you on your toes. It was good. So now this is sort of a... Well, you know, not everyone loves beer, so we're going to play Maybe. around with some non-beer things. So this is the lemon lime. So this is going to just be really straightforward. Lemon lime. Um, this is one of my favorites, personally, because I, in the same way, I like my beer to be um, not on the sweet side. I prefer... My seltzers to not be super sweet. Um, so this one is hits home for me with the citrus flavor, but everybody's going to have their own favorite. Not much to it. I mean, it's... It, it's a lot of citrus. Yeah, but I mean, it's... Uh, really, really light. So you get what we're going for there with just that really yeah, nice, no, I mean, easy you, drinking, you, you, like... You poured me a tall glass of this, and I would never suspect there's any kind of booze in there. That's the idea. No, they <laughs> sneak up on you, I promise. <laughs> I promise they will no, sneak no. up on you. Um, but yeah, so... The lemon lime is probably the lightest of the bunch, followed by grapefruit. You get a little bit more strong flavor with the black cherry rosemary and then with the clementine hibiscus. Um, obviously, rather than walking us through the whole uh, bash room, I picked some of where's the more this, popular ones. Where's this price out as far as like uh, compared to like a six pack of a of a of just a craft beer or something like that? Is it, is it equivalent or Yeah, so or? actually you'll probably find it, you're going to find it, especially in a six pack, a little bit less than in that 12 pack variety for sure. Uh, probably just a little bit less than some of your higher end craft beers. Okay. So you're going to find it right around what we call like premium pricing. So you may pay eight ninety nine, nine ninety nine for a six pack, uh, maybe seventeen ninety nine for that twelve pack. Okay. It really just depends on the store, but yeah, it's it's going to be pretty uh, fairly priced, and it's not going to be anything where like you know you, when you pick up the canned wines, that's one of the downsides to those is with those canned wines, they're priced like wine, yes. right? Because you're you're definitely paying for some more alcohol there. But these are going to be priced right alongside your favorite beers. And now, despite the f different flavors and colorful names that you have, do they all have the... Are they all clear? They're all clear. Yep, they are It's all, all clear, clear to drink all clear. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're really stretching Bill's... Hey. Uh, okay, now this does... Bill this... here on the, on the non-beer. <laughs> Bill's like, this is not what I'm here for. I'm the beer expert. So, so this... this is the grapefruit. So this is going to be another one that's really light in flavor. Um, I like this one a lot, personally. It does smell like uh, the Fresca. The it Fresca does. It's a soda. lot like Fresca. Yep. I mean, if you imagine just a very hot, you know, mid Atlantic DC day, I mean, this would go extremely well with that. It would. Oh, yeah, yeah, it would. These are going to be, I know for me, last year, Spike Seltzers were my beach drink. They're going to be great for boating. They're going to be great for, you know, just being out on the water, hiking. Like, I, when I typically go and take my dogs hiking, uh, with some friends, we'll pack a couple of these, too, so when you get to the peak, you can sit down and have a drink and just not feel like you're right. carrying that beer the rest of the way sure. down the mountain. Sure. I like that one. Yeah? It is good. That, that was good. That was, that was ref actually, both of them, really refreshing. I mean, right. you, you, you had it absolutely right, but always turn around and hot summer day and... Yeah. Yeah. That is what they were brewed for, but, you know, it's funny. Um... <laughs> Obviously, it's a pretty seasonal drink just by nature, but what's interesting is the way that the category has grown, we find that... Even in the off season, what would be the off season? So into the fall and winter months, these things still sell like crazy. You know, I think seasons on any number of things are sort of a moot point. I mean, you know, it used to be that the yeah. what the the white shoes or whatever it was before yeah. after Labor Day and yeah. stuff like that. I mean, I think people find a find a taste that they like and and drink it. I yeah, don't... absolutely. And that's you know that's part of what this whole category is about. And you know, a lot of these new things like Old Rocks Rose Cider. Like, if you know what you like, 
that's what you're going to drink, and it should be available. So why not make something? And, and, for I, and I, I get it if you're in a small batch or something like that, and, and it's a limited release, if you will. Mm-hmm. That they've got to gear up to produce something. Sure. If this came with some kind of anti-mosquito properties, I think that I'd be all over this. <laughs> I, 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 I would bathe. In this. You like I'll take one of those Bon yeah. Viv spiky seltzers with a with a with a shot of deep, please. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. great. Exactly. I don't know how that would. So, Lauren, am I smelling cherries? What is this? This is black cherry rosemary. Okay. Right. Yeah, that's exactly what you're smelling. So this one is much stronger in flavor Just than the other two. Yeah, so they're kind of doing a little bit for everybody. None here. of none of them are coming close to uh, the the strength and heaviness of a soda. No, uh, right. of a you know a Pepsi or yeah, a, the, and that's the know, idea. That, that, I mean, that not your father's, that um, best stand, that Henry's hard soda. Like that category has really, with this wellness trend, sort of fizzled out. Um, I think people are much more conscious about what they're putting in their bodies, and so this is sort of stepped up to fill that space. I like it. That's really it's that's that's good. Yeah, good. I'm glad do they, we got, do, we got do they, do they come in um variety packs? Yes, yes, and that's the cool thing. So we've actually got two different variety packs. There's a 12 pack variety pack, which is great to take to like your friend's barbecue or obviously to pick up for yourself. But it's great to take somewhere, take to a party. But there's also a six pack variety pack. So if you really don't want to commit to 12 of them, you can pick up a six pack variety pack too, as well as all the flavors by themselves. Sure. But there's a lot of different ways to to get the product, which is great. Nice. Yeah, it's a good one. I think it's a winner. That looks like it's going to be a, a cooler staple in the summer for me. Yeah, yeah. Right? Could be. That's awesome. It's a cooler staple for me now, so. <laughs> <laughs> so I can relate. Um, next, let's go ahead. We'll touch on these Agua Frescas next because I think we're going to just kind of follow in that uh She's unwrapping that it. Yeah, well, I had to chill them down pretty quickly, so they had to get wrapped in paper towels. Is that how you quickly chill? Yeah, chill so that's the best trick. Take a wet paper towel. See, now and people wrap thought this was all about beer. This this is life this skills. This is here. life skills, right? I'm like your bear grills okay. or whatever the guy's name is that like <laughs> helps you with survival. So I am I am survivalist uh, contributor. So I just like that you likened yourself to bear grills. <laughs> I've seen that guy eat unsavory things on TV. And that's amazing. I know. I know. I'm not quite as extreme. Uh, yeah, so if you take a uh, if you, you take drink a Mountain Dew, you will be. <laughs> So you take a paper towel, you take a paper towel and, and get it wet and wrap the can or the bottle and then stick it in the fridge. Or if you're super desperate, raise your hand if you're better than that, that's me, um, stick it in the freezer. It chills it exponentially faster. So that's typically what we do. That's actually a trick I think you taught me, Bill, back when I was a wee little sales rep a million years ago. I would ago, take credit for that. When you're going to a sampling at an account or, you know, you're, you're headed to go take a beer sample to somebody if it's not cold. Wrap it in a wet paper towel, stick it in your cooler, huh. and it'll cool down faster. Yep. See, I always thought you just put it in like uh, water with uh, cold, cold water ice. And that works and too. Salt, I think. Was, uh... That works too, but wrapping in the paper towel helps get it cold all around. All around. Yeah. yeah so that's kind of the idea. The spin trick too. If the spin, spin trick works great. If you uh-huh. spin in the in the water ice right. cocktail, if you if you spin okay, that's all surface area and physics there. Correct. The oh, surface physics, physics my Historian, <laughs> beer night, and math expert, Bill Catron. I would like for my wife to hear all of this. <laughs> she, she's, she's like, like oh, I have to listen to that all the time. With the female oh, version yeah. of Bear Grylls here. So, yeah, right. Yeah, right. so this all smells right, so amazing. This is Agua Fresca. So a wow. little bit of background on this. There's no road, smell. Golden Road. You don't smell it at all? Really? Uh, it's like a super cucumber. Yeah. A little bit, but not strong to me. I'm interested to see what you get from this then. So... These Agua Frescas are just a really, really cool um, sort of wow. different brand from Golden Road, which is one of our breweries out of L.A. They do a ton of programming with, like, the fruit carts and the taco trucks and things like that uh, in their community. Um, they actually have a variety pack called a fruit cart pack that has, like, a melon wheat, a mango wheat, and a pineapple wheat. So they kind of took that the same spirit of that and made these Agua Frescas. Um, so they're 95 calories. Can I see the can? Yes, you may. Okay, thank you. So they're 95 mm-hmm. calories. Uh, they are very, very low in sugar, and they have a couple of different flavors. They're 4% alcohol, a couple of different flavors. Uh, this is the cucumber lime. This is my favorite, and hands down seems to be the most popular. Oh There's God. also a strawberry pineapple that I've got sitting in here, um, and a mango. So definitely a handful of options, but this one in particular uh, seems to be everybody's favorite. i got to be honest, this is amazing. This is my, out of everything we've tried so far. Oh, this is your jam. Are you oh, a gin drinker? Oh, mama. This is good, Do huh? you like gin? I, I don't I celebrate the entire catalog. I know you do. I, I like know. everything. And if you're a gin drinker, if you like Hendrix, like this is going to be your like non liquor drink. This is it's, amazing. It's, it's it's this has one of the more unique flavors. It's good. I, it's one of the more unique flavors that, and it, this is cucumber and lime. Lime. Yeah, and the colder that it gets, it's honestly not as cold as it should be, and that's my fault. The colder that it gets, the more cucumber and the less lime. 
that you get, so it finishes really, really soft huh. and clean. It's got a little bit more bite when it's on the warmer side, but it's delicious. And made in L.A., right? And made in L.A. Every time I think of L.A., I think of Wang Chung. I don't know why, but these simulations there. <laughs> Haven't heard from them in a while. Well, it's because the song to live and die. Oh, right, 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 right. That was a great movie. I know. What are we gonna that do was a, sorry, I know. Well, I'm weird. All right. All right. Moving right along. Uh, let's do the other Agua Fresca next. This is the strawberry pineapple. I just pulled my two favorites because I'm selfish. I knew we didn't want to drink like nine different things today. So, I mean, it's okay. Bear girl shouldn't selfish. drink nine different things. I've seen him jump off a helicopter and get out of like some kind of weird That wilderness. was actually me. <laughs> just kidding. No, it wasn't. <laughs> I would have past you, Lord. Moonlighting. Yeah. yeah. Phil knows me well enough. Phil's like, actually, I can see you do that. Oh, 100%. Phil's like, if you could just not do that, that'd be great. Well, you know, you do drive uh, an amazing car that's made for stuff like that. I'm just saying. You know what? It's just as outdoorsy as I am. <laughs> yeah, wait, 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 <laughs> I have a Subaru. Okay. I have a Subaru. I have two giant dogs that get to uh, go a lot of places with me, and I needed something suitable. Yeah. You're like the local version of my daughter. She's got two... Uh... I think it's like Maine Coon Hound kind of mixed. Kind I, of have co- I have Coon Hounds. With uh, crazy eyes. I'll just show you some pictures. Oh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> I have two Coon Hounds. They're hilarious and ridiculous. And my um, life is a sitcom. This has a lot of a uh, lot more smell sure. yeah, to so it than, than the other one. Yeah, so the flavor on this one's a little stronger. I'm gonna, a little sweeter. And I'm going to go to you guys on this because I'm allergic to strawberry. Oh, that's right. I forgot about it's that. Okay. Sorry, Bill. I'm but not it trying smells to phenomenal. And the, col- the, the coloring is like more like the, the fresca soda, so there's no mm-hmm. what a so stupid this, allergy. I know. It's the weirdest allergy. Yeah. Or strawberry allergy. So this is strawberry pineapple. Again, a little bit sweeter. So like anybody who really likes those kind of sweet, like Mike's Hard Lemonade kind of stuff, but uh-huh. is like balking at that 36 grams of sugar that's in a Mike's Hard Lemonade, right. this is a great option. It, it's got a fantastic nose. I mean, it really does. It's still sweet. Uh huh. But again, this one's only 110 calories. This, it seems a little too sweet for me in the yeah. summer, for personally. I'm not a sugar person. I mm-hmm. don't like sweet, which is why the uh, Bond and Spike seltzers are my much more my speed but uh the feedback on these has been great so far we're doing a ton of like taco night activations with it where you know we're pairing it with tacos right and uh that's been really successful so far so we'll see what it does but it's brand new do any of these beyond beers have um are equivalent of like say a diet at, at down at zero or five calories i mean I, we've talked about 90 and you know 110 where we're at right now and bill can probably talk more of the technical stuff on this but right now you're not going to find a whole lot on underneath that level of calories because otherwise it, that's the alcohol right um okay you, you so can't it's, get it's the, the natural calories. sugars and the alcohol it's the natural sugars and the alcohol so you can really only get it down so far okay um before it's either non-alcohol or it's you know w- once you're down to zero grams of sugar and once you're down to those like really low like under 100 calories uh-huh. for a especially for a malt beverage or a malt based beverage that's about the lowest. I should, should say that's about as low as you're going to go. I mean, even when you look at just like plain Tito's and things like that, like you're still not getting under what 45, 50 calories right. really for okay. a serving. So it's that's where the alcohol comes in. Fair enough. You said that very well. Thanks, Bill. My pleasure. I learned so much from you in seven years. <laughs> All right, we're going to uh, break from the mold a little bit. We're going to do a little Who Garden real quick, and then we'll get into uh, rose all day, and then we'll finish with that. Now, what was that roll all about? Bill, you want to talk about the roll? She just rolled the can. What's uh, the deal? Well, so this is the thing, is that it has sediment that, that lays in the can, and if you don't kind of roll it over, what happens is that it becomes like a very kind of clear, like golden, brilliant golden color, and you want it to be opaque and white. That's why they call it a wit beer in, in Belgium. Uh, this beer is from 1445, and it comes from the town of Hoogarden. And uh, this style kind of came became extinct in like the 1970s, and there was a, there was a milk farmer uh, in the town, thank you very much, dairy farmer, I should say, that uh, his name was Pierre Sellis, that grew up with this style of beer and loved this beer so much that he wanted to bring it back. So he did. So he brought back this style of wit beer. And so in doing so, he kind of rejuvenated the, the, you know, the flavor profile in this and all that kind of stuff. And that's how this beer came to be. A lot of the things that are used in this, you get a lot of lemons, you get a lot of like uh, orange or curacao, and then you get some uh, of... Uh, I can't remember the name of that spice. Coriander. Coriander. It's the seed of cilantro. Yeah. yeah. So that's so so it's just a phenomenal beer. I think this is one of the. I mean, when you when you land in Belgium, one of my f- favorite things to do is that when you go to Bru- you know the Brussels airport, they sell this in half liter big Hugarden glasses, and I make a beeline down there and get it every time. That's what I do. Mm-hmm. But it's a, I think it's just it's one of the, the best, best summer beers. Yeah. So good. And it's really funny. Like wheat beers have have 
sort of gone back and forth in popularity, you know, as craft beer has evolved and imports have evolved and what have you. But every, and I'm not a wheat beer drinker. I do like by design. Yeah, yeah so this that, is yeah. right. This is, this is the original. Now this um, is, is this, when, when I order a Hoop Garden, this is, this is the beer that I'm getting at yeah. Lush, right? I mean, this is yeah. not a special. Yeah. And how recently are they coming into cans? So the cans are pretty recent. Cans have just come out in the past year, um, and they're sort of a slow rollout. We're sort of doubling down on the cans this year, um, just because of the portability of sure. a can versus a bottle. Um, so you'll, you'll start to see cans around in increasing numbers uh, coming up here soon. Just out of curiosity, on a marketing standpoint, being located where we are in the Mid-Atlantic and the Chesapeake Bay and all the water that we have around us... You know, I mean, we look down at the Atlantic down on the shore and the bay and mm-hmm. everything else. Do you find, as opposed to other colleagues, I guess, around the country, that you sell predominantly more canned product? Uh, I mean, know, to me, it would make more sense. It, it was like, you know, a can on a boat. You, yes. So that's um, the thing is, like, we have a lot of rooftops, just like any other metropolitan area would, like with D.C. I can speak upon that. And, but with golf courses and boats and that kind of stuff, th- that does make more sense. You don't want glass around and, you know, you can't uh, on boats and stuff like that. But on rooftops, it's actually a, a liability to have glasses. Right. So what you're finding, though, is in fine dining restaurants, it's the old guard. The old guard does not want cans. They want bottles. So, therefore, it's kind of trying to you know, assimilate people into that. I think there was a stipulation a long time ago that if you had canned beer that it tasted bad, like it had Mm -hmm. a metallic taste. And that's not so. Um, I look at it as mini kegs. Yep. But the only the only issue is that they're they're great. They're impervious to light. They're they're lighter. They stack twice as high as a bottle. They're great for a lot of reasons. I mean I know we've talked about the 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 advantages of it. Yeah. Yeah. The only problem I have with can is that it's temperate. So you gotta keep it like where it's it's cold. Uh, because if you don't, that can change the uh, you know the right. flavor of the beer pretty rapidly. Right. But it's the same with the bottle. I mean, it, you know, in my opinion, I think that it tastes better in a can, just because it's impervious to light. That's my opinion. And you don't have that additional. Um, I mean, it's, it's more less oxygen introduced mm-hmm. to it in the canning yep. process too. Correct. 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 In the bottling. And, and you can the cap can. will allow right small amounts of oxygen. Right. right. And you can it's can like, condition, bottle condition. You can throw a little bit more yeast on top of it, which in which in It'll eat more, uh, you know, sugars in the beer and create more carbon dioxide. So that, therefore, it'll last longer. So, who garden? I love it. This is an amazing beer. I love it. And in Belgium, they make a lot of different varieties of this, but uh, we won't talk about that. Oh awesome. man, we're lobbying rosé. Who garden rosé? Yeah, they we're, make so good. We're lobbying. Yeah. <laughs> Anyways. All right. I think my first wheat beer was uh, Francis Connor. Oh yeah. God, the best. Uh, that beer. And actually, actually, it was in the basement at Ram's Head. That beer uh, is right time. Wow. Fantastic. Somebody somebody turned me on to it and said, Hey, you gotta try this. And I was like, Okay. You know they still have a um, tab at Ramsa. Did they really? Yeah. I just had one a couple weeks ago. Wow. It's a good experience, yeah. And when did you first have it? I wonder if they had on that long. That'd be awesome. 1849. Yeah. <laughs> uh, no, it Don't was, give uh, it away. It probably was uh, 96, 95, 96, somewhere yeah, in there. Yeah, you can still get a That's impressive. Right, that's impressive. What's Grolsch? That, so that's not a wheat beer. It's a beer from Holland. It's a lager. Yeah. Yeah. It's pretty good. I mean, their, their whole shtick, though, not a shtick, but they, they put everything in green bottles. Right. And the problem with that is the transfer of light, because when you have fluorescent lights or any kind of UV lights that can penetrate the bottle, that's when you get the skunkiness because diacetyl sits. Right. So I personally don't like green bottle beer unless the packaging that it comes in, you know, basically makes it to where it's impervious to light. Gotcha. Gotcha. They still do the funny, uh, yeah, the, the mason cups. caps. That I've seen, you know, it's kind of taken a dip in market. I haven't seen it in quite a lo- quite a while. Yeah, yeah that was that was one of my uh, when I had some extra money in high school. Maybe a little. <laughs> you, you, you go and get that. It was. Uh... Mm-hmm. All right, this is not this is not Who Garden because it's pink. This isn't Who Garden because it's pink. It's a rosé. We're gonna rosé all day. Bill, I'm gonna let you lead on this one since rosé ciders are your jam. All right, so this is from Bold Rock Cidery. They're out of Nellysford, Virginia. Um, this product in particular, six percent alcohol. Um, it's it's a little bit higher than the normal stuff. I think the normal stuff is right around five and a half. Uh, this goes right around six. It's very fruit forward, and in what you look at the color on it, that pinkish color is from naturally occurring pigments. It's a pinkish hue. It is a pinkish. Do you like a pinkish hue? <laughs> Seinfeld gift. reference. Yeah. Uh, no, I get it. I like a pinkish hue. <laughs> I was going to go down that road. What about I... the hair? Can I get my hands? Can I run my hands through <laughs> the hair? <laughs> Sorry. Oh, man. Back to that digressing thing. No, I, I just love Seinfeld. It sounds like a goal for the next one. How many Seinfeld or Animal House references can we <laughs> I know. Oh, that's for a bear grill. Yeah. Yeah, right. <laughs> we work in the beer industry. We're here all day. We can... 
Um, so yeah, so anyway, it was very fruit forward. The thing I like about it is a little bit drier. I mean, you do get that fruit in the back. You do get that dryness of it. And the thing that I, I particularly like about this cider is when you pour it and you see it, and and you're you know you're at a you're you're at a dock bar. You're at you know a downtown establishment, whatever. That color really sets it off. People are attracted to that color. They want to order one. The flavor profile on this is dry. I, I've noticed that this area, um, it's more of a dry cider area. It's not a sweet yeah. cider area, and that's very interesting. Um, I think part of that is is we started with dry ciders that were on draft, and then people just got a flavor profile for it. So what's what's a dry cider? It's just like um, the just a, a basic. Well, there's a lot of dry like, ciders out there. I, I, I think the one that kind of led the, you know, we're talking 20 years ago that yeah. came into the market and kind of did was Magners. I think that's what it was. Yeah. Okay. Now, since then, they've changed their flavor profile and all that other kind of stuff. But you'll see tons of ciders out there. I just think that when you see a dry cider next to a sweet cider, normally dry ciders pretend to perform better. Would do better. Mm-hmm. Well, I did like the uh, ginger and turmeric one. That yeah, we did that a, lot, other, a couple times ago, A couple times right? ago, yeah. Yeah, that yeah, was yeah you blew us off last time. We were at uh, Mission Barbecue talking about uh, St. Patty's Day. They said you were hungover. Probably. <laughs> <laughs> no. 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 So, but this one's fruit forward, and that's why you get that little bit of that rosé flavor, too, because it's almost reminiscent of a wine. It is. You know? It is. So that, that's the thing I like about it, but it's good. Yeah. But it comes in a bottle, and so at a beer drinking occasion, at a tailgate or whatever, sure. you're not trying to pour a bottle of rosé into your Dixie cup. And in a 16-ounce can. Also a 16-ounce ah. can. Great point. Yeah. So if you, yeah, get that in your life. 16-ounce can. Not, bad. not my favorite of this one, but actually you've had, there hasn't been one today that I've been like, ooh. There have been a couple every no, now and then. No, we usually get. We usually get. It's usually there's one where I'm like, oh, okay, yeah. well, we'll just well, typically we put throw that on the uh, on the no list. Typically I just want you to think about. I just want you to think about 420. You're eating rockfish, right? <laughs> you know, you're having this rosé. Yeah, rosé and rockfish all day. Rockfish, rosé, and brooches. Can we say that? Yeah, that's sure, <laughs> sure. Look, it's 2019. We just did that. So we just did that. Look how progressive we are, you guys. <laughs> all right, last one, grand finale, the Natterdays. All right. A lot so, of talk about this thing. Yeah. And a lot of color with it. I've seen it in, uh, in the liquor store. Pink flamingos everywhere. In, in Pink Scott Brothers everywhere. and in Bay Ridge. I've seen a... Oh, yeah. So, Natterdays <laughs> is strawberry lemonade for people who like beer. Listen to that. Listen to how happy yeah. it sounds. For people who are listening to this right now, if you look at the can of this, it has pink plastic pink flamingos. Lawn flamingos. What, lawn Yeah, they're flamingos. like the lawn flamingos. Um, that are very healthy on the shrimp diet because they're very pink, and then they're all over the can. But uh, I will say this: um, it is just—it's a great, great beer uh, alternative, I guess you would say, because it's—it is, it is a beer. strawberry lemonade beer. It is beer. I mean, it's yeah. beer at the end of the day. It is natty light at the end of the day. Uh, you know, it's really funny about this beer, and we'll be completely transparent. Uh, everybody wants to hate this beer. It's true. But when it first, when they first announced it, everyone rolled their eyes and went, well, this is going to be ridiculous. And then people had an opportunity to try it at our sales and marketing conference. And all of a sudden, forecasts started going through the roof. And then all of a sudden, everybody starts getting their hands on these test bottles that they were sending out to distributors. And by the time anybody who was even remotely in charge of one of these brands had the opportunity to try it, everyone was shocked right. at how good the liquid was. Everyone wants to hate it. Everyone says I want to hate it, but I love it. It's that kind of it's that kind of drink. Like I don't like fruit in my beer. Keep your fruit out of my beer. Like I want my beer to taste like beer, but I am not lying when I say that there is a couple of natter days in my fridge at any given time and one or two of them at the end of a hot day at a horse show is right up my alley. I, I will say that it plays into the the pink and the yellow and the I mean it's, it's got a little bit of the tacky can. That's the idea. Um, that's the yeah, that is the idea. That's the idea. It's kind of like putting a kiddie pool in your front yard and filling it full of yeah. milk water. And... Not, um, no, this is good. Right? I wouldn't have picked it out as being a, a beer, though. It is, though. I mean, I know, I know. What, yeah. now what, what does define a beer? Is, is it when, when malt? It, no, it's, it's, just... it's a beer. It's brewed just, it is a beer. But it they is... add strawberry lemonade yeah. to it. That's what they do. It's, and is this, the base is of it, this is natural light. It's natural light. It's just a, and they just... Cut a little bit off of that and threw some lemonade, pink lemonade. <laughs> Look, you can't have a Saturday unless you have a natter day. Okay? That's what we're doing here. That's true. It's very true. You know what I mean? Well fun, Bill. Thank you. I mean, I'm sure you've probably seen anybody, <laughs> any, like, millennial has probably seen the natter days. Saturdays are for the boys, which turned into natter days are for the boys. 
Natterdays are for the girls because this beer is fantastic. But what's actually really funny is it is probably 50-50 male to female and people who love this beer. There are some very manly, burly men running around this warehouse who are chugging them some Natterdays. I bet Bear Grylls would drink that. Probably. I mean... (laughs) <laughs> he would this wait till no, no, no. you're gonna he eat would wait, sugar. No. You're gonna... He would wait till it came out of the bear, and then and then he <laughs> would drink it. Yeah, it's probably true. <laughs> is is there is there any difference? I mean, is this a lesser alcohol content than Natty Light? Is no, this just uh, it's, it's, it's the same? Four point two, four and a half, something like that. I think four two. Uh, yeah, four two. I think along with the rest of the old uh, Natty Light family. To Lo- but to Lauren's point with this, I have I have um I have yeah, a place in D.C. that's really close to the to the ballpark the nationals ballpark and uh, i talked to the guy about this he didn't really want to take it i said look do me a favor check trust this me. out trust <laughs> me try it he bought two 30 packs because it either comes in i think it's an 18 or 30 packs, it's right? an 18 and a 30 yeah so he bought two 30 packs and sold uh almost all of it in three days and i said well what do you attribute that to and he goes we we had some college guys that came up there and drink the whole thing yeah. And I laughed, and I was like, "Well, I told you." It's like it's the iron. I think it's the I- irony of the can, the flamenco, the flavor it's profile. It's fun. Like it's it fun. doesn't. Like beer has been taking yeah. itself so seriously for so long, and I think this particular brand. And there's a lot of brands that are starting to kind of do this, but this particular brand does a great job of just being like, "Look, it's summertime. You want something that tastes really good, but is still light beer." Now, and is it's it, affordable. Is this so, the first first foray for Natty Light into a flavored? type of a beer or have they done so, stuff like that in the past natural it's... has done diff there, there's a lot of different pieces to the natural line um over the years but they've never done something like this that is a really large scale <laughs> flavored version of natural light um there will be another uh sort of complement to this another brand to add to the family which will be a um like a citrus pilsner from Natty Light that's going to come later that's a collaboration with Barstool Sports which is a sports blog out of New England but Honestly, this one, it was one of those that everyone doubted and was like, okay, you know what, it'll just, you know, all right, we'll sell it alongside with Natty, whatever. And it, it's a monster. It's an absolute monster. We couldn't keep it on the shelves for the first probably month and a half that we had it. It was so bad when we first got this product that our sales reps that wanted to drink it on the weekend, their accounts were selling out of it so fast. We had sales reps driving up into other sales reps' territories Goodbye. on the weekend to go buy it, which, you know, that that says something. Like, you're a sales rep for a beer company. You can go to any one of your accounts and purchase product. You know where to get right. product. But it was selling so fast that there was, like, they had mass to... hysteria amongst employees here to put it in the hands of all their friends. And Where's it not selling? Nowhere. I mean, it's in Fuego. Okay. <laughs> it's literally one of those brands right now, and, and probably for the first part of the summer, it's one of those brands that there's nowhere that it's really not selling. And you said this is this is available in what, 18? Uh, 18, 18 pack packs cans and 30, and 30 packs. packs, and it's 12 ounce uh, cans. Yep. Okay, uh, so I'm not, not not picking up a six pack of it. No. Well, I mean, look, you could buy an 18 pack and make your own six right, pack. Right, 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 I mean, right. Look, this is 2019, but, we can do that. But I mean, that, that's how their packaging yep. is it's coming out yeah. now. Yep. Purely a can product? Yes. Purely. Well, and, and so this it's is the thing. You went into it with hesitation, so what do you think? It's good. It's good. <laughs> That's what we get. Are I mean, you I mean, also, uh, <laughs> I really wanted to hate it, and I wanted to be judgy, but I, 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 don't, I, don't, I don't know that I came in with the, I, I want to hate it, but I mean, I, I'm definitely Skeptical. not an Addy Light fan. Reservations. You have reservations. Uh, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm not, you know, you, you, you line up a whole bunch of beers, Natty Light is probably one of the last ones I'm going to drink. Yeah. Uh, and that's just, you know, my taste, but. This uh, is for me. Is that bad? This uh, is good. Says the guy that likes Rolling Rock. But yeah, that's, you know, I love Rolling Rock. Though. I just, I'm, I'm, equal, I'm equal opportunity. I like it all. Who am I kidding? But yeah, it's you know, it's really fun. It doesn't take itself seriously. It's it's been a really fun one to sell so far. Mm-hmm. And, um, and it's light. I mean, I, I think it is, it, to yeah. me, I mean, uh, I'm drinking out of the little sippy cup here. Like, mm-hmm. uh, but it's. Uh, I mean, you can shotgun the can if you want. Know, <laughs> but I, I think it makes sense that it's it, it's going to be a. Uh, a drinkable beer. Yeah, it I mean, absolutely. it's not going to be something that you're going to be like, you know, if I the Ho- the Who Garden, I'm mm-hmm. going to turn around, I'm going to mm-hmm. drink that, and I'm going to be, sure. be full after a beer, yeah. sure. maybe too. This I could probably do several more. Yeah. Now, is this something that may be available during at festivals on tap, or is this strictly a? So right now, it's not available on draft. You may be able to find it certain festivals. Uh, we may utilize the cans uh, where it's appropriate, but you know, it's one of those things too where. It, it can kind of sustain itself. It, it kind of can okay. can carry itself. Um, and it's definitely a an occasion type of beer. You know, it's meant for 
being outside. It's meant for a hot day. It's meant for that friend of yours who really wants to shotgun something that's not like a opening day of rockfish season. Like opening day of rockfish season. <laughs> I'm telling you. Flamingos and rockfish. We can I'm... make something happen. <laughs> there's like, a, there's got to be a good like cross merch in there. I think so. Flamingos eating rockfish. You know, we can make it happen. I'm good at Photoshop. You need to buy Bill's me. actually great at Photoshop. He's not <laughs> lying. Like, he's <laughs> exceptional. Um, yeah. As evidenced by the numbers of Photoshop pictures plastered around this office. Oh, yeah. See Bill, but... Yeah, so... You know, so those class sales weren't really here in December? Oh, no, that was all just Bill. Yeah, photoshopping yeah. everything on. Yeah. What, you missed it? <laughs> uh, Good. I like it. Yeah. Um, I'm glad. That's exactly... Another check in the... I, 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 I mean, I no, like no it, seriously. Guys. That's yeah. exactly what happens every time we try it on people. And, and I'm not uh, kidding you. That's the exact... I mean, And I mean, to be completely you? honest, I don't think Bill has taken a, a natural light product into an account to sample... In the entire time he's been with this You're company, correct. Which you is a correct. very, very long time. Uh, the fact that Bill is well-versed on Natty Light and is taking it into places and that are buying it and then calling him and being like, hey, man, I sold out in three days, that says something. There is I, some serious... Yeah, I mean, I mean, it's, it's not going to be a... Uh... It's not. It's, it's, not it's not. It's not going to be a, a, a go-to beer for me. Like, yeah. like I say, my sure. my go-to is the Bud Light, and I mean, it's yeah. it's good. But it, it, no, summertime, absolutely. I think that's a. Uh, I think it's a winner. Yep. I think it's a winner. Well, obviously, you do too because you're getting them sell, sell out of your account. So it's, uh, yeah, I mean, it's pretty cool. You know, the thing is, I'm taking it to everyone that has like very outdoor, you know, patio esque style places and letting them try it. Well, how are how are yeah. they how are they how are they dealing with that? I mean, if you said that most people want to want to hate it. I mean, how, well, how, are they, how are they selling it? Once people try it, it's they, over. They're just coming back. I will once, say this. It's it's one of those things, and I'm going to cut you off yeah, before I fine. let you talk. It's fine. We did not have it in any on-premise, so like bars and restaurants to start. It was very, very minimal. But what we found is the longer that it was available in beer and liquor stores, the more we were getting people coming to us and asking for it. Um, in their bars, like, hey, can I get that Natterdays? Like, mm-hmm. I'd love to sell it on my patio. Hey, do you guys have Natterdays? Like, Acme downtown did, like, I don't know, it was like 10 cases of 30 packs or 10 30 packs in the first, like, two days wow. of when we had it and just sold right through it. So, you know, you get those that awareness out there and people start asking for it and they start asking for it in bars and they're sitting on your patio at your outdoor bar looking at your beer list going, eh, hey, do you guys have Natterdays? And that not, feedback not, makes it to well, us. And mind then, mind you, this know, is the third time I'm going back. I know. <laughs> so, well, so, no, I, the, I, and you have this I, like, so. quizzical look on your well, face. No, I, I just, just, like, I'm, I'm looking at the can and I was trying to remember whether it had a pink hue to it or not because yeah. we talked about with the Bold Rock having the pink being yeah. an attractive pink-a-shoe. thing, but it doesn't. It's, well, it's just a regular. I will say this. I, I have a guy that's very versed in beer. I mean, he knows his stuff. He used to run a couple beer bars in D.C. and now he is working in a place in Montgomery County. And so I let him try a little bit of this and he goes, oh my God, he rolled his eyes and he goes, there's no effing way, you know, all that kind of stuff so I, I poured it to him he tried it and then he gave me this look like you know like you I can't be serious well, yeah like it was one of those things like you know I and then and then he called you, three yeah. people from back behind the bar and the kitchen to come and try it and then he looked at me and goes i hate you so much give me three cases <laughs> and that's what, yeah, that's what he did and, and it's one of those things you know this would be one of those great blind taste testing things oh yeah Super fun. Just play tricks on all your really crafty people and just be like, oh, it's a strawberry lemonade goza from blah, blah, blah. I mean, this is so good. You're like, never mind. It's anyway. I mean, for the people listening to this right now, I just want to say that they're going back to the can several times. Okay. I'm only on my second job. I I, I willfully admit that's my third. I'm on my third little shot class of it. Yeah, so Natterdays has been really fun. It's just been, it's just fun. And is that that what they're they're going back to? Yeah. 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 All the hype. Was it worth it? Does yeah, it, live it, was. Up to the it hype? was. Now, is this going to be something going to be year round, or is this going to be a summer beer, or is this, is, is this a seasonal thing, or don't know yet? TBD. Um, you know, uh, a great example is Bud Light Orange from last year. So it started out as a seasonal uh, for the summer, but it did so well that they brought it back in February of this year, and it's now a year round brand. So okay. I would, I would be surprised, cons- like, given that it continues to sell like it's selling right now, um, it continues to be this popular. I would be shocked if they didn't bring it back and turn it around as a year round brand. Get back and grab it for fall football season. Yeah. Oh my Full God. Can you imagine, can you imagine a tailgate with this? Like everybody who doesn't like beer and who, you know, sits there at the tailgate oh and is God. scrambling to find something that they like to drink that isn't super high alcohol and they can keep up with their beer drinking friends. Like that is right up that alley. Full disclosure, my favorite beer of last year, and I'm not making this up was Bud Light Orange. And I drank so much of it. My wife got so mad because the recycling bin was always full. Are you serious? Oh, <laughs> uh, she got so mad at me all the time. And I would just crush I love Bud that. Light I Orange. I loved it. That beer is super well, this is, It's also known as a cheap beer too. 
Yeah. Uh, as far as you know, oh, yeah. what what it what it costs. I mean, for a party yep. or something like that, for like say as a tailgate or something like that. Not quantity, not quality. But now you get both. <laughs> yeah. No. And personally, as a natty light drinker, I like I find the quality in natty light too. But it's solid. Yeah. It's solid. Well, I'm well past college years, but still love it. Goes well with the rockfish. <laughs> All right, well, what are we doing next month when we talk? Do we know? I think we're going to talk a little bit about summer beer next month. Okay. We're going to be getting into that season. Uh, we'll probably talk about some more uh, brands out of the Beyond Beer category um, as we sort of move into that. And then, uh, I don't know, what else we got coming in for summer? Well, there's so many brands. So Fourth of uh, July stuff, too. We'll have some stuff around Budweiser. We will have the new Budweiser. You know, we tried Copper Lager right, right. And, and Freedom Reserve and all of those brands, so they'll be the new Budweiser. Okay. Um, that we'll have by then, so we'll certainly move into Bud Distillery. Is that going to be a partnership with a booze, with a, with a distillery not. or not? It is not. What's um, it, it going to be? I'm sorry? What's it going to be? It's a red lager. Okay. Is this the same one they had last year? No. It, okay. This is different. Okay. Um, so yeah, we'll talk about Discovery a little bit. Um, and yeah, some of the other summer beers. Bill is about to cut yeah. them off again. No, you didn't come out. You're fine. It's just that I'll have a list together the next time we're here because there's so many coming out that it's Perfect. hard to keep up. I mean, it's a lot. I mean, currently right now, I have so many out from Victory. I mean, they have like four new ones out. They have Cloud the new, Walker. The uh, Twisted Monkey. The Twisted Monkey. The Variety Monkey, Pack will be here by then. The No Brainer. I mean, there's oh, just the brighter, so, there's so many out right now. So, I mean, I'll, I'll have a laundry list. A hey, question for you guys yeah. as far as, okay, you guys are a distributor of, of beer in the area. Do breweries actually come to you asking you for what you're hearing and what you're seeing to, in developing their recipes, or do they do it on their own? Oh, I'm yeah. just out of curious. A as well. it's a- yeah, I think it's interesting. So a lot of these breweries have people in market, so they basically go back to their you know significant you know brewery, and then they say, or, or people, and they, they tell them, this is what we're seeing as trends go. This is what we're seeing that's kind of you know big right, or And all small. the craft beers people are going back on. <laughs> They like they like Natter days. Mm-hmm. Well, you, you see the th- the problem with the craft beer thing is you got to be first, uh, like Ricky Bobby, or you're last. Your last. Yeah, so like you know. Actually, I have a really funny thing. Excuse me for the one second. sour thing. Like if you're not doing the sour thing, like that was it's very big and it's right. pretty popular. But if you if you're last to get to that, then it's like you know the sour thing's already over. And then what's next? Hazy IPA. So if you're you know. You don't want to be like in a field of where everybody has it. You kind of want to be in the, the very beginning stage. Right. Sure. Certainly. Or in the or the creation. I, I imagine the first one out is always yeah. a risky. Well, yeah. I mean, it's true. And, and there's certain styles that never kind of just jumped off and like really made it well. Like black IPAs mm-hmm. never really kind of took fruition. Mm-hmm. I mean, believe it or not, white beers in America never really took fruition except for maybe Allagash. So there's a couple out right. there. I mean, it may be, you know, Shock Top and Blue Moon, but not a lot. Okay. You know, so. Well, there's an awful lot of things to do. I mean, you've got the opening day of Rocker season on the 20th, and the Boatyard has their tournament as well as their big party in their parking lot as well. And I know it's a little bit early, but tickets are on sale, and they always do sell out. But you want to check out the Bands in the Sand, and you can get them at Chesapeake Bay Foundation, cbf.org. And this year, it is um, Big Bad Voodoo Daddy yep. is going to be playing awesome. along with Misspent Youth and uh, Mad Planet. So those tickets will sell out. So if you want to go to that party, which is just an awesome lot of fun down there on the beach, uh, get your tickets now because I imagine by the time we do this again next month, it's going to be, yeah, well, we'll just tell you about what it's going to be. We'll, yeah. we'll tell you about the party you're going to miss. <laughs> yeah. Um, It'll sell out quick. It and, and swing down to the boatyard on the 20th. It's uh, it's going to be a, a great time. Will Natterdays be there? No, no matter. Uh, I know. No. Such a missed opportunity. Too bad Naples doesn't have an open container law. <laughs> you, know, you, know, you know, on the weekends where they yeah, shut I'm sure down. you know people. Yeah. yeah. You know, where they, where they shut, shut down, shut down for traffic for the weekend and allow, you know, yeah. you know, when they um when the Clydesdales came to West Street. Yeah. Uh, there were people that were walking out when they did the uh, Fringe when Festival on the, West uh, Trail. Yeah, when they shut it down. And, and people are just out there. I mean, nobody got out of control. It was, like, very cool. You yeah. know, I could get a, you know, I mean, meanwhile, some of the restaurants are going, wait, but that's my glass. You yeah. Know, you know, but Can you bring that back, please? Um, but it's uh, it's real neat. Yeah. I'm impressed with Natterdays. And I, and I do like the uh, Bon & Viv seltzers. Well, to your point, what I just ran out to grab, and I, unfortunately I didn't have one cold, um, but we'll try and include it next time. There are some of these craft brewers who have seen what Natter Days has done and come up with their own versions. So we'll talk a little bit about Wicked Weed first next time you're here. What's, what's the, okay, that brings the question. I mean, would, would a craft beer, which by almost by definition is a higher price point, be able to compete with something like At that Days? price point? No. I mean, certainly not at that price point. I wouldn't expect that. But I mean, would, would the market yes. support? Yeah, and that's exactly. Support a craft beer along those lines. Okay. Absolutely. And that's what, we'll, we'll bring some bursts next time. Maybe we'll sample them next to each other so you can try them. Uh, but Wicked Weed is one of the craftiest breweries um, in our portfolio out of Asheville, North Carolina. 
and uh, they have a new series called Burst, which is a series of uh, sessionable sours. So they are super drinkable, lower alcohol, fruity, fruity yeah. slightly tart sour beers. Uh, the first one is a passion fruit lychee um, that is delicious, and it's that it gets that same drinking occasion, just that. Warm weather, really nice outside. You want to be able to crush a few, but you want something fruity and fun, and that's exactly where it lives. Let's get into it next month. Yeah, absolutely. Lauren and Bill, thank you very much. You're very well. Thank you for having us. This Crab Cake has been brought to you by the Maryland Crabs. Full episodes release every Thursday at noon. Please make sure you subscribe and visit us online at themarylandcrabs.com. <laughs>